you have common sense if you notice there's a world around you not if you are thinking you can do whatever you want to do there is only one thing that i know is true about existence you may think that it's common it's not so common sense that we're dealing with oh hello there hi Welcome into Season 3, Episode 18, everybody. I am Lop. This is my lovely co-host, Sky, as always, coming at you in that belly shirt and low-cut top <laughs> with Squeaks <laughs> McGee hanging out over there. We see y'all in the live chat. We appreciate you guys being here. If you're listening to us driving down the road, look out. There's a bird. Sky. <laughs> yep. Have you ever had any embarrassing moments in the bedroom? <laughs> Every moment oh. in the bedroom has been embarrassing for me. Oh. But luckily for me, they always wanted the lights off, so kind of helped. Lights off? Mm-hmm. I think I'm more of a lights mid kind of guy. Lights like not mid, like yeah. Not like shopping center bright, but not like... <laughs> Dark dungeon cave, you know what I mean? Just yeah. a, a nice ambiance. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh but this person uh said they were they were going down on their high school girlfriend mm -hmm. many years ago for them. And mm -hmm. they said they finally his his girlfriend finally decided that they were going to it's the first time they've ever pulled around at all. Yeah. And it was his first time ever going down on her and he was chewing gum. He said oh, people God. back then still had pubes. Guess oh, what happened? No, the gum got on the pube. What do you do about that? <laughs> peanut butter. I, I, that's what I was going to say. I was like, did they break out the peanut butter? Did it just get more fun? What happened? I was going to say, I'm like, I kind of feel like, all right, now it's time to move to the next level. But like, also, I probably would have been in that, that awkward stage, especially if they didn't know like yeah. that peanut butter and at the same time like you just shave it it's totally fine it's just it's well, pubes. it'll grow back apparently back then that wasn't a thing that people did i don't know how long ago this was but it was back in the day <laughs> way back in the day yeah. it must have been because like sounds like there was a jungle down there like he had to take <laughs> the weed whacker to it that gum it is just... still in there <laughs> It just reminds me of like scary movie. Yeah. Remember when like she first gets the, the chastity bats belt off? Yeah. Out. <laughs> it's just cobwebs and just <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like a fun time, but also no. it kinda does. It kinda sounds hilarious <laughs> to me. I would probably just start laughing the whole time. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're the dude who's just like has the gum in his mouth and it's happening, well, like, but here's like the thing, why tick, didn't he take the gum out? He was probably nervous. It was the first time they ever did anything. You know, he was probably, like, not really thinking. And he probably, you know, in my mind, he was like, oh, let me just leave the gum in my mouth soon because I don't know what it's going to taste like. Like, what if I don't like it? What if the gum well, helps? I, I don't know that it was his first time ever. It was just his first time with her. I mean, it kind of has to be his first time ever if you're fucking got gum in your goddamn mouth and you're going not down necessarily. on someone. People are not bright. There's a uh, podcast that people should listen to. It's called Not So Common Sense. <laughs> a lot of people don't have it. It's not so common. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they were in high school at the time, so maybe it was the first. Who knows? But that just, it's always funny to me. It cracks me up here. Because I love hearing like the real raw stories. Because all you see in movies is just, the, the, the sex the scenes in up. movies are so unrealistic. I know. They're so unrealistic and they just skip all of the like all of the awkward stuff. parts and the the everything. I don't I don't want to be graphic but the cleanup and the you like all it, of it. It's like it's like that that uh what's that movie? Uh National Lampoon Van Wilder when mm -hmm. he was like in college, but it was the other guy who was like massaging the girl for the first time and he used way too much oil yeah. and then end up like sliding off of her. <laughs> on fire yeah. like, um, like stuff like that is just like okay something like that could have definitely happened to somebody <laughs> i enjoy watching that it makes it makes it more real I Taj feel Mahal like battle bad that was his name that's that a movie. hell of a name uh, <laughs> i didn't remember at all Taj Mahal battle bad that's that's 
As, uh, why I remember that, I'll never know. <laughs> Such an old movie. Such a great Such a memory. ridiculous character name. <laughs> but a great movie. It was a, it's definitely a great movie. Yep. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. But yeah, it's so unrealistic in movie scenes. Like, they're up against the wall, and they're bouncing mm -hmm. off, off the walls, going down the hallway, somehow still, like... Doing Intact. everything and connected. <laughs> They're docked in. <laughs> like, it's just, it's so dumb. Why do they do that? Who, who, like, I feel like the first person that directed a sex scene had never had sex before. And it just kind of, they are just, <laughs> all from there. scenes from there just, like, grew from that. You know, I think it stems from, like, just porn in general. I think, like, people just see things on porn and just automatically assume, like, it's real life. And newsflash to all of you, it's not real life. That's literally scripted. Like, porn is scripted. It is people who are acting. Like, it's not anything else but that except something like a fantasy. Yeah. So, I guess. I but people really need to... I want to... I want to... I want like real scenes give me yeah. this give me the scene where the dude can't get the rubber wrapper open i know you I was know give the me the thing when he's trying to open the... it and she's like okay give it to me yeah I got this. give me the scene where the <laughs> the grandma walks in you know and catches you like <laughs> oh man that reminds me of another movie not another teen movie at the very beginning Oh when yeah, she's using the yeah. vibrator. <laughs> oh, brutal! Her whole family comes in with a cane. Brutal. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, maybe we don't need those scenes because they're just so cringy and awkward. They're fantastic. <laughs> I think it makes people feel better about themselves because it's like, okay, this stuff really, like, this goofy stuff really does happen. Yeah, to and other people. I'm think, a fan of that. I think that's what's taken off more in in movies and social media and all that stuff are people being just real and raw mm -hmm. about their lives because people are so tired of just the fake make-believe oh my gosh it's everything it's just so redundant and, and i don't so i fake. honestly don't blame it because honestly i used to watch tlc all the time and i don't know if anybody knows like tlc like network it takes experiences from real people the problem is is that back in the day like they would take those experiences from real people and then just add to it. They would mm -hmm. just exasperate what was happening. And just, I just feel like that was, that just made things worse. So I used to watch something called Long Island Medium. And I, from what I heard and like what I've seen is that she was just somebody who was genuine, who would go up to people and say like, hey, I have a message for you from the other side, from blah, 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 blah. But the producers and the directors would tell her, no, 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 you have to make it seem like you're like, this Cleo lady, like you yeah. have to make it seem like, oh, I am getting tapped in from the future, like something yeah. insane. And it puts such a horrible just taste in people's mouth because now you're just making it seem worse than it is. Mm -hmm. Or like big people little world or little people big world, whatever it is. I used to watch that all the time too. And it's like, they make this whole thing out of something that should have never been and ruin people's lives. And it's just, it's insane to me. First off, I just, I don't understand reality TV at all. I don't get it. I don't know why it even exists. Why the fuck are we even paying attention to other people and not our own lives and looking at ourselves? But I digress. Yeah. Uh, if it's on TV, it's scripted to an extent, at least. Yeah. A little bit. 100%. Like, this uh -huh. is what we want you to do. Make it look natural and, I think and then go from there. that's what people are getting tired of. Like, we talked about, what was it, last week? We talked about the prank couples and stuff. How... Mm -hmm. So much of it is just fake. I, like I see these I fake pranks going on. I'm like, this isn't a prank. You, you, they, it, it's set up. It's satire. scripted. This yeah, whole thing is. It's, it's, it's not even satire. It's just scripted. It's just full on. There's not even. It's clips. Yeah, it's, and I just I can scroll past it immediately. Yeah, same. And I just I don't understand it. And like I get it. Like people are like, well, it's engagement. Like no matter what, even if it's bad engagement, it's still engagement. And I think we just, as a society, need to get rid of that mindset. We need to get rid of, like, the negativity, the, the bad, the, if it's bad, it's still good. Well, no, like, just why can't it just all be good? Why can't yeah. you just try your best to all just be good? Because No no press is bad, or, yeah, no yeah. press is bad press or whatever, or something and like that. And it's irritating to me. However you want to say it. 
it's but, irritating to me yeah it's everything's about the views and clicks and the algorithms nothing's about the actual content anymore and i think mm -hmm. that's why the movies and shows we get these days are trash because they're wanting to bring in people that aren't actors for one they're wanting to bring in social media people influencers that yeah have a bunch of followers that's going to get them a lot more clicks and all yeah as somebody who's been in the acting world for a long time um <laughs> I I literally before submitting to certain roles to audition for certain roles they would ask how many followers do you have on Instagram mm -hmm. how many followers do you have on Facebook or how many and it's like this should not matter this should be yeah. based on talent on who's the the better actor the best actor for this yep. role and yep. I, that's like, ne that doesn't make sense to me. It's it funny does to me because, like, I get it for like money wise, but like, it's funny to me because like you wouldn't do that as far as like a pilot. You know, hey pilot, like, do you have more Instagram followers than that pilot? Well, like, they are no, doing that stuff what... now, though. I know, but that's what's what's killing me. Like doctors too. Like, okay, this doctor has all of these reviews, all mm -hmm. these things on Instagram. I'm like, okay, but that guy could also be like the worst fucking doctor in the whole entire world. Doesn't but matter, it's just people. extremely charismatic. It's people all just... about your social media influence, your social media uh, power, whatever you want to say it. That it's, is it's sad. Your and you know, it goes. It kind of goes back to the fact that people are just lazy. They don't want to put in the work of looking up and researching and doing the work of making sure the things that they have going on is correct information mm -hmm. and going beyond that i'm a fan of people asking questions ask the questions ask all of the questions make sure that you are getting the right information if you have if you're questioning the information continue to search but i just i just feel like nobody wants to do that they're just they just want things told to them presented to them mm -hmm. but then they still want their equality they still want to be unique they still want all these things but you're you're being a mindless sheep following the rest of the society in the crowd yeah just be yourself and kind of get out of that mindset don't chase what everybody else is chasing do what you want to do well i think the problem is a lot of people don't know what they're supposed to do so mm -hmm. they just follow the crowds a lot of sheep you know and people have been saying that for years all oh, the sheeple the sheeple but like really though the sheeple Mm -hmm. People really need to start having like thoughts of their own, general like genuine feelings and thoughts of their own, and, and, and put those to... out there. When I'm scrolling TikTok and I see all these stupid, clearly scripted things, I immediately scroll past. But then I'll come to somebody just like sitting in their car, like being emotional and having like a real conversation about real things going on, and like that's the ones I stop on. Yeah, and I, I'm like, okay, this is what I want. I want real. People deal with real problems, dealing with real and things. The problem with that too now, and I hate to say this, is that there are so many people who are so jaded from social media and society of what they think things should be that when people finally admit to real things and real problems about what's going on in their lives, they get attacked by having their opinion or trying to voice their opinion as yeah. being wrong no matter what. And it has nothing to do with that. Like somebody may be literally spilling their heart out because they need help or they need to get it out and i feel like people are just silencing people who truly need to speak and it just needs to stop like well, everybody is entitled to their opinion everybody's entitled to say whatever the fuck it is that you want to say just don't be an asshole about it the intelligent Nothing is absolute. people the intelligent people are staying quiet though yeah and, and that's, that's the problem, problem. Yeah, it's a huge problem. We're just letting it's idiocracy. We're letting the yeah. stupid rise. We are becoming it idiocracy. That uh, <laughs> that movie it's gonna was going to be our documentary. It, it's... it genuinely, <laughs> I think it is a documentary because like, that's what we're going to. Mm -hmm. Everything's done by machines. Every like, <laughs> it's kind of scary. I I laughed at that movie the first time I watched it, and now rewatching it years later, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, right. Oh God. Oh, We're gonna no. be watering our oh, plants God. with Gatorade. <laughs> and you know what's even more funny? So everybody's terrified because I'm glad you brought up like being run by machines. Everybody is terrified of AI, right? And mm -hmm. I get that. I understand the concept. I get that. You know, this could dis displace a lot of people, especially artists, especially mm -hmm. you know people in in low level like 
employees, like checkout lines and stuff like that. And I understand that. But what people don't understand is this is something that has been happening for years and years and years and years and years. Like this is just decades. Like think about, you know, steel back in the day, like when things moved from there, like everything, the whole industry changed. So many people lost their jobs, but we still continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. And all AI is doing is creating a better way for us to get things done faster and more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And if we are able to utilize that in a smart way, that's gonna free up so much time for us to be able to follow our dreams, follow our passions, be able to do that. For example, myself, I was terrified of AI. I didn't want to put any information into anything because I was just like, they're just going to like look me up and you know, my whole like tinfoil hat thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I want nothing to do with it. I have been able to successfully run my nonprofit alone Mm -hmm. by utilizing AI to help me with everything I do, literally. And it's insane. Even with, with, with doing other grant applications and stuff like that, it even tells you like, hey, utilize AI if you don't understand something. And it's just like, thank you. Awesome. Great. And it's so wonderful to be able to do that. But I think a lot of people don't know how to use it the right way. So instead of them learning, they're just getting the information and just like, oh, okay, this is fine. But they're not understanding the information that they're gathering either. Well, let's let's talk about the the good and the bad of AI. You know, Mm -hmm. good things are things like it is super fast. It saves a lot of time doing a Mm -hmm. lot of things. You can find out a lot of information without having to research for hours on end. Uh, it eliminates kind of biases. Supposed to. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> supposed to. <laughs> but and it's really good at doing the the tasks that we're tired of. Do people are tired of doing that are just redundant, just repetitive, and mm-hmm. you have to do inputting numbers and stuff like these machines are doing that for us, which I think is great. But as you said, like with artists and stuff, I think it's it's causing a lack of creativity. Yeah. Like real genuine creativity. Yeah. Because people are just and letting the machines do everything for them. Exactly. And it's, I do understand, like, it's going to take away from, from real art, from real artists and re- real creativity. And that's where I go back with people just need to utilize it, but not be lazy with it. Don't mm-hmm. utilize it in a way that you're trying to be a crook, that you're trying to make a billion dollars, that you're trying to do all of these things. If you're utilizing it for the right way, it's like everything in life. You know, I, we get something and us as humans automatically go to the worst ends of the fucking world mm-hmm. to do something horrible with the things that we have when it can create beautiful. Like, I am not an artist. I cannot draw. I don't like I like the way that I want to. I cannot. But I can input something that I have in my head into AI and say, this is the drawing that I wish I could create. Help me create it. And it would paint this beautiful picture that I see in my head. Mm -hmm. And it's so wonderful for me to be able to look at something that like I would never in a million years be able to create on my own. And I think that's where people need to understand, like there's the fine line. Find where the line is, don't cross it. Just utilize it for the right ways to help you be a better person. But nobody wants to do that. It's the easy way out. I agree. Well, it's all about the quick buck. That's how everything is these days. Everything is Mm -hmm. just boom, 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 on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And again it's great saves a lot of time saves a lot moving way too fast man but well it's it's moving faster than we're able to yeah understand it yeah it's it's blink of an eye like i feel like chat gpt just came out and now they're already rolling with like we've got sentient beings now Mm -hmm. we're like wait a minute what No one's going to need slaves anymore. They're just going to have robots and they're going to try to enslave the robots. And then the robots are going to like uprise and get pissed off at us. It's going to take a big company (laughs) like Google or an Amazon or something to mass produce these AI robots or anything serious to happen. Yeah. You know what I I mean? I already, I already seen robots out in, you know, in China and Japan, but they're already in stores, like doing the work of, the workers and they're well, like that's okay, the problem right there they shouldn't be selling robots to the general public i know <laughs> have we seen what the general public does with everything we give them <laughs> everything the general public is given we turn it into something ridiculous absolutely ridiculous i just don't understand why like i think Jesus we're bored man. i think people are just bored as humans 
they are, but they wouldn't be if they would just stop and look at themselves in the mirror and say, okay, let me see what's going on in my own fucking life. Because we're all fucking amazing people with awesome ideas. We're all creative. We all have dreams and passions, but nobody knows how to look inward. Nobody knows how to look in themselves. And it's, it's sad to me. Like it really is to not be able to know the thing that brings you the most joy in life and be able to continue that and fulfill it. And well, I think people just need to start doing that. We also talked about the stupid stuff they teach in schools. Yeah. That, that <laughs> is not helping any of the, the future. No, the school system is the only thing that has not changed. They haven't in, caught up with, no, with nothing. today's technology. Even when I was in school, I, back in 2000, <laughs> uh, back when I was in school, it was, you know, we didn't have a lot of the stuff. We didn't have, I mean, we had the internet, but like we just had a computer room. Nobody had phones, yeah. smartphones, none of that. Yeah. And My first phone was that flip phone when I was like 14 or 15. I don't know what they're doing in schools now, <laughs> but I feel like by now they should just have an app where they can do all of their stuff on. Oh, well, here's the funny thing is that because all these kids, like the kids this now that are growing up, they're, they're literally our last hope because they are questioning everything. They have to. They, they pull to. out their phones in school and be like, well, that's not right. That's this not isn't true. right. Like, you're not true. Your facts are wrong. Blah, blah. So they're arguing with teachers. And shame on you, teachers. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. like, Teaching stuff that you don't know to be true, for one. Exactly. Like, how dare you? Like, those are our kids. But I, I come, I'm so happy for the kids. Like, my, my kid is, like, one of them. Where he, everything I teach him since he's old school, he will always come to me and question something if he feels like it's wrong. Or he just doesn't understand it. He's like, this doesn't seem right. Why is this like this? Like, I don't understand why this is like this. And I'm like, good, question it. Ask me questions. Tell me it's wrong. And let's figure it out. Let's find the right information. Well, the problem too is you go to the teachers and you say, this isn't right. Why are you teaching this? And they get mad. Well, it's not even only that. They'll, they'll, it's the blame game. They'll say, well, this is the curriculum. We're required mm -hmm. to teach this. So yeah. then you go to whoever's requiring it, and they're like, well, this is handed down from the government. They are requiring us mm -hmm. to require this. And it just goes on and on and on until it's, it's up at control. a level that you can't get to. You it's know what control. I mean? I've always said this, that schools are there to create workers. 100%. Schools are there to create the people who can be easily manipulated. And very few people do break out. Very few people do. They do see it for what it is, and I'm happy for those people. And uh, this is not a diss on any teachers out there because I have so many friends who are teachers that are amazing. Well, that's what I was saying. Trying. It's not really it, necessarily it's, on the teachers because they're required no, to teach exactly. certain things. They're following the rules of what they need to. And it's it angers me, too, because I see the curriculum that I have to teach my kid and I don't want to. I don't I don't want to teach him 90 percent of the stuff that is given to me that I have to teach him. Yeah. And I even talked to the superintendents and was like, this is wrong information. Like, why am, I, why am I required to teach this? And their response was, if you don't do that, it is considered, it is considered, what is it? Um, child abuse. And that yeah. you would be reprimanded and your child may be taken from you. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? Because I'm refusing to teach them something that you guys are saying is right when it's clearly wrong? Yeah, it's that's, messed up. That's not... It's not right. You guys are literally brainwashing my child, and you think I'm going to be. And okay what do you think is that? happening in schools where it's not being questioned? Exactly, and it terrifies me. I don't I'm have like... kids, and it even makes me mad. You know what I mean? Because, like you said, they're our future. Like they're going to yeah. be the ones taking care of us when we're older. And if they're exactly. coming out dumber than we are, there's no hope. <laughs> there's no hope. There's no hope for us. At all. Period. <laughs> I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> they're like, well, I'm assuming they don't let kids have phones in school, like be on their phones when they're in classes and stuff. So, which makes no sense, because in high school and stuff, teachers always told me, well, you're never, you'll never always have a calculator everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Well, that's and now I do. do, and they can't say, well, you'll never have your phone wherever you go. Yeah, you will. Yeah. You will. You have access to the internet. I almost don't see the point in school anymore. Other than the basics of reading, writing, and basic math. But even that can be taught at home. Yeah, I agree. Honestly. 
a hundred percent. Like again, that's why they have homeschooling. And what's funny too is like when I was first going off into this adventure for homeschooling my kid, I was desperately trying to find things that were online. They are now they now have public schools that are all online where teachers can teach. And I'm like, why isn't every school across the board like this in that case? All these teachers Money. that are struggling. Well, that's the thing. All these teachers that are struggling because they're not getting any money. Hey, here's a thought. Start teaching online. Use your degree and you would make your own money, become your own entrepreneur and make, don't have to answer to anybody. You don't. You just follow whatever rules that you need to for that state. You're good to go. And you could do the bare minimum literally at your house. You never have to leave. You never have to worry about all this violence that's happening in school. All these these politics that are happening in school, all this other bullshit. You don't have to worry about any of that. You guys can work together. How great and I don't would see audio... why that's a problem. How great would audiobooks have been for us back in the day I when know. teachers assigned us books to read? <laughs> oh man, that would have been amazing. I'm not a fan of audiobooks. I've tried. I just I like Yeah, but it's I'm still at that time for me, like that would have been a gajillion times better than reading. I don't down know read about it. I kind of feel like I feel like for you, you would fall asleep and the book would never. No, I just enter be your doing brain. stuff. I would just have to do stuff while I'm listening to it. I'm None gonna fall asleep a lot faster going. reading the book than I am listening to it. I can promise you that. No Not chance, me, man. I, I but, but you put a good how, book in like, my hand. Those, I don't know how they're actually enforcing anything in schools now because if they get a if they get homework. They can go home and all of the answers to every homework problem is 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 there online. Yep. I and couldn't have imagined that. In no. School. Can you like a book reports that our kids are getting? They just go on to Chat GPT and they're just like, well, let me go ahead and just type in the book yeah. report can, title can and blah you blah. Type blah. me out a oh, book report done. about this. Bam, it's and, done. Yeah. They can put it in any style they want. In I'm any jealous, voice. honestly. I'm genuinely it's not jealous. <laughs> but uh, see, here's the thing. So my kid's smart. He 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 learned that really fast when I had him, and he used to go online, find the answers, and then put it there. So I went a step ahead of him, and I said, "If you want to do that, fine, but now you have to source everything. You have to give me the sources. Yeah, you have to give even me five that is different online. sources, and that's fine. But as long as he knows how to fact check and keep going and look for things, not just grab the first thing he sees and throw it on, that is what's important." Like, you need to make sure that what you're getting isn't satire. You need to make sure what you're getting isn't, like, lies, isn't something that somebody just wants you to believe. You mm -hmm. need to make sure that what you're getting has more than just a random internet link or a random YouTube video. And he will. Like, he, like now, he won't even bother with yeah, going but online. Here's the thing. Teachers aren't checking that. They just see no, it. They just they don't see know it. They're how. like, oh, there's a link there. That's good. I'm sure that's where he got his source. Yeah. They're not going. No. It. You know what I mean? No. They're not going through each person's sources. Nope. So they don't I don't care. I just, they don't care. The, the, I'm a little concerned for the future with our our school systems, but I'm also, like you said, I am. I have a little hope, though, because this generation coming up is questioning things. Yeah, they, they see things for what it is, and especially with culture, like society and woke culture and all that. Like They're seeing it for what it is, and they're just like, none of this makes sense everything you guys are saying like none of this why is everybody fighting the way they're fighting like they even a lot of them don't won't even vote anymore either they're like me they're just like what's the point of politics there yeah. is no point that's all control that's all it is they just want to control all of us so why the hell are we all voting for for what none of our votes fucking matter anyway right. <laughs> so, like, we're like, yeah oh, i think people are definitely anyway? yeah a lot of people <laughs> are are not voting these days and stuff which i i i get it I get it. You, I just, it feels like no matter what you do, you have zero control over what yeah. actually happens. And I think that's the big problem with most people is they just don't know how to fix any of the problems. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of times you can't as a sole person, you can't do it. No, you can't. It takes a lot of money, a lot of time and a lot of uh, people. Resource. Yeah. And... I don't know. It's it's a little scary. I'm a little bit scared for the <laughs> That's future. What you should be. I am too. But at the same time, like we have as as humans, we've progressed a lot. And I know like a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? There's all these wars like there. Wars are happening every single day, some bigger than others. 
Some are more broadcast than others, but literally death and destruction is happening every single day. Well, and also the but, information we're getting on those wars is is all it's muted. Well, it's all it's all false. You're yeah, only getting parts too. of the stories and stuff. So you yep. don't know. Everybody's like, oh, we got to root for this country or we got to root for this country. We got to support. This. We don't know. You're just going based on what you've seen on the news. Yep. You know what I mean? I you don't know who the good you. guy is or the bad guy. My my prime example for this, like every single time was 9-11. Hmm. I remember because I was here when it happened. I remember watching the news, but my mother was watching the, the Spanish news, the Spanish network, the things that they would show on the Spanish networks versus what they showed on like Fox or NBC or mm -hmm. CNN, completely night and day. Oh, yeah. And I was so mad because I was like, this isn't truth. This isn't what's happening. Like, this is what's happening. Why is another country actually giving me the correct information? Yeah. Why is my own country lying to me? That, that was the day that I said to myself, like, because my mother has, since day one, she's like, you are not Hispanic, you are American. You are not Hispanic, you are American. She drilled that into our heads. That was the day that I said, I don't belong to anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I am not proud of anybody anymore because it is sad. I cannot back something up that is going to control and treat its people and the rest of its civilization as if we are beneath them. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I can't support it. I don't care. I just can't. I, I get it, and it's, if people are still watching the news, like CNN and Fox, I get it, you'll watch your local news, see what's going on around town, that's, that's one thing, but mm -hmm. if you're watching these big news stations, and you're taking everything they're saying as truth, as the gospel, you really need to wake up. Yeah. Don't be woke, wake the fuck up. Yep. Because it's getting ridiculous. Yep. I could see, I'll go somewhere and the news will be on and I'll see like five minutes of it. And I'm, I just, I won't go play in traffic. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's unreal. I'm like, well, who wants to live in this world? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I once worked at a, like, uh, it was, it was actually like an insurance company um, in Colorado. We were the, I was a tech support for. Um, the military insurance, um, AA, USAA, or whatever it is. And in our lunchroom, they had all the TVs. And this was like an outsourced, like, telecommunications company. It wasn't, like, directly the, the insurance company. But all the TVs had the same stations on, and it was all news, like um, CNN and all that stuff. And I remember asking the, the lead guy that was there, I said, can we change these channels <laughs> to something than other than this? Because this is... I'm walking into work and I'm immediately getting depressed. Like yeah. there's like there is death and destruction. Like where are the happy squirrels on little there's, fucking there's surfboards? There's no more of that. Where where are the fucking little catwalk like with little costumes on them doing little like, fashion shows? Like where are the happy this is, news? This is why they're wanting things like TikTok banned mm -hmm. because people are. are in the news they're going to tiktok they're getting Intelligent. real information from real people experiencing real life events and they're mm -hmm. like oh yeah this is what it showed on the news but i was there look at this video that i took mm -hmm. and it's like it's completely different it's contradicting them and they just don't know so how they, to they want that taken down and yep. it's unreal and it's that's unreal. that's that's the good of social media and that's what mm -hmm. i tell people i'm like social media isn't used the way that it's supposed to be used because we're brainwashed to use it in a different way. But the great thing about social media, and I say this all, I've said this since day one with Twitter. I was like, I used to use Twitter. That is my news outlet. If I want to know what's happening, I will fucking just type it in the search bar and see what's going on in another part of the world and find out real raw information from a person who's literally living there. Mm -hmm. And then I can go and fact check and do my own studies that way and figure out what is happening around me. And I think, again, it just comes down to laziness. People just want everything just served on a platter right in front of them. Like, just give me the news. Just I don't know it that it's me. even the laziness. I think it's, it's stupidity. That too. I genuinely think people just actually believe what they're being told. And That's it's, scary. It is terrifying. That is so scary. Because people, people kill over these things. Oh, people yeah. fight over these things. And it's just like, why? 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 Just why? I There's was no at the reason. gym one day running on the treadmill, and you know how they always have all the TVs up, right, side by yeah. side? 
Yeah. All the different news channels, all the different things. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I swear one day I saw it was some, they were talking something about Biden. And it said <laughs> they had Fox on one and CNN on the other. They were talking about the exact same situation. The exact <laughs> same situation with two completely different misleading different. titles yep. on it. Completely one of them, one of them over here, Biden makes no sense doing this. And then over here, Biden makes the most sense he's ever made doing this. And it's the same thing. <laughs> and it's like, what? It's perception. It's all perception. It's who's paying them the most. And it's just, it's just horrible. It is really, really, this is why I've always argued with like, I understand ignorance is bliss. But ignorance isn't bliss once you're being controlled like a sheep. And I understand that because, like, I've seen people who genuinely don't understand things and they know they don't understand things. And you can feel the sadness and the hurt when somebody is taking advantage of them and they finally realize it. Mm-hmm. And I don't ever well, want to I be said. at that point. That's my only hope with the future coming up. The, the future generation is they are actually starting to question things. And yeah, they... make a difference. If they don't know something, instead of just being like, "Oh, I don't, I don't really know," I guess I got to take that for what it is. Mm-hmm. They're they're not letting people walk all over them. Yeah, I've been seeing TikToks. There's this <laughs> cartoon TikTok that uh, a girl, I think her, I think her name is Donna. Uh, it's just a, it's a cartoon they do where she's always being like talked to by HR because of her actions, <laughs> and. They'll come like the, I saw one today where she's they came and said, I want to I want to talk to you about your hours that you submitted. I noticed you had two extra hours on here. And she said, well, yeah, you called me last week when I was off work and wanted me to check certain things and do a couple things while I was off work. And she said, that's my time. I'm off work. So you're subcontracting me at this point, she said. Yep. And I require a minimum of two hours pay before I do any work. As a contractor, that's my rate. That's just my mm-hmm. rules. And she said, and then the HR lady was like, "Well, we didn't. I didn't approve these hours. I don't think. I don't think management's going to approve it." And she said, "Well, did you check before you asked me to do this work off the clock?" And yep. and I love it. So all of those tick, all of her TikToks are like that. How these companies are are taking advantage of the worker mm-hmm. and the and she's Donna is the worker that is. Putting these people in their place, basically teaching people, hey, you don't have to take this crap. Yeah. You I've don't that have to take day it. Day one. You, like, you, we are expendable in the eyes of corporate world. I've worked in corporate. I get corporate. I know what I was told while working in corporate. I know what I wasn't allowed to do while working in corporate. You know how many times they said, hey, you need to stay an extra 10 hours this week and not get paid for it because we can't pay you overtime. Mm -hmm. And I would say, then why am I coming in? And they would say, well, it's required for you to come in. No, it is not. It is required for you to pay me my time and a half. The second you clock in, it's required for you to do your job. And the second you clock out, you're done. You don't have to answer a phone call. You don't have to return emails. You don't have to do any of that stuff. And here's the kicker of what they do, which is why most people do it anyway. And I was one of those fools for a very long time because I thought I was going somewhere. They were like, well, this is going to look really good when Mm -hmm. we present it in front of corporate and you want to get that promotion or you want to get that raise. We want to make sure that you're going to go above and beyond. No, go fuck yourself. Which is never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And it's, it's, if it does happen, it's not going to be worth all the extra effort that you put into it. You're going to get like a, a $1 raise. You know, (laughs) my mom has worked for Macy's for over Almost three decades now, I should say. Yeah, about three decades now. In the whole time she is there, she has been a manager for about two of those decades. Her raise that she has gotten in that past time total, dollar fifty. Yeah, unreal. Like I would have, I would have had to quit a long time ago. Yeah, and like I've, I've been trying, I've been forcing, like <laughs> begging and pleading her. Like they don't care if you were to die literally on the floor they would walk right over you get on the phone call another macy's and be like hey can you guys send over laura from this department because ours is dead and we need somebody to cover the floor that's literally what they would do well they have a term for what the people are doing now and and it's called quiet quitting yeah and they're basically just 
they're not working. Which I'm all for, but at the same time, as a consumer, as a customer, I hate it. Because I can't get anything done when I need help from somebody at a store. When I need any information from anybody that works anywhere, all I'm getting is a mindless waffle looking at me. You know what I mean? doesn't even have syrup on it. It's just a dry waffle just looking at me. That's it. That's and, and it's I'm talking to wallpaper. Oh my god! Why are they a waffle? Don't make them delicious. But food. I don't understand how. I, I mean, I get why they're doing it. I, I get like, but what's the fix for that? What's the fix where where corporates like take advantage of them as much as they can, and then the workers are like, no, I'm not going to do this. Who suffers? It's the the consumers and the workers. Corporate doesn't care. They'll replace you in a second. This is where I say it all comes back full circle. This is where AI is like such a wonderful tool. Things like this. Like, and honestly, I feel like the last time I actually went to a a store or anything and spoke to an employee was probably good like 10 to 15 years ago because I refuse to talk to anybody anymore. I was like, if I need information, there's an app. If I need something else, I'll look it up on the internet. If mm-hmm. there's something I need, I will figure it the fuck out. Yeah. Because I can't. I can't sit there and, and wait for somebody who doesn't give a shit about their job to give me the wrong information. How many times have I called ahead of time to go to a store and say, hey, I'm coming over to pick this up. I see it on your site. Do you guys have it? Uh, let me check. Yeah. And then they say, yeah, it's here. You get there and it's not fucking there. Yeah. And it's just like, what was the point of me even speaking to you? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, like, I understand the quiet quitting part, but I think people are taking it a little too far in the sense of they're not doing their jobs at all. At all. Anywhere. And it's yeah. kind of crazy. And it's it all stems back up from corporate ladder. And me, I used to be a manager for so many different places. And the reason why I climbed up so quickly, I would go up the ladder so fast is because I would tell every single person who I worked for, if I'm a manager and I can't do the job of somebody who is underneath me, I should not be a manager because that is my job to ensure that everything is working properly. It is my job to ensure my team is working properly. I never once had somebody call out and, and they say, okay, well, I'm sick. And me go, oh, no, you have to you have to come in. You have to find somebody else for your mm-hmm. shift. I'd be like, okay, you need to call out. Go right ahead. Totally fine. I got this covered until I can find somebody. It was my job to take care of that. Right. And people don't do that anymore. I was a, I was a manager of a business. And uh, when I would, I had to make schedules. I had to make the schedules for everybody. And mm-hmm. when I would do that, I literally would have backups ready and in place ready to go i would talk to people and say hey i don't have you on this day but are you available to come in if somebody needs to call off yes or no is fine but are you available would you want those hours if it comes available so Mm -hmm. you can do that the problem is people don't they don't plan ahead no they don't i loved there was a job i used to work at and it was before i became like the little shift manager but it was at a restaurant and they would put the, the weekly schedule up every week like we were able to like voice our, our opinion and say like, hey, we need this because it was in college town and they understood like people had school and things they needed to do. And underneath, they would have a little section where the employees could look at it. And if they weren't on that day and they wanted extra hours, they would put their information and say, hey, if you need this day off, just call me. Or if, they, if there's something happens, just call me. So they would always be somebody to mm-hmm. come in and cover a shift. And I love that. I was like, why? can't places implement that why why is that not a thing like people are just they don't think they just don't think about the unexpected yeah they just assume it's all going to go according to plan and when it <laughs> doesn't they lose their minds <laughs> they don't panic you've, the worst i mean was... you've been dealing with that with with some companies this week oh my god (laughs) yes it's been a nightmare and all we've been trying to do is get something switched over from one account to another on a program that we use and it's so simple and it was so funny to me because like at the very beginning when all this was happening so (laughs) we're talking about adobe and i love adobe this is this is not a diss on adobe at all i absolutely adore their programs you get the best bang for your buck with them you can utilize them for all of your content creation needs if you're somebody in that or art or whatever 
it really, and as a business owner, it's amazing. It does amazing things. However, the simplest of tasks that could be prevented by doing just the simplest of things is just, it's ridiculous to me. I needed to move from a personal account to our now charity account, all of our information, all of our files. It should have taken literally a few minutes to do something so simple. Mm -hmm. However, it wasn't. And I was given the runaround. And I was told, I told them, I said, hey, if you guys just gave me access to my old account for literally just a few moments, I would be able to rectify this situation. And I was told time and time again, we can't do that. That's just not possible. You can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. After a whole weekend of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I lost my shit today. I lost mm -hmm. my, I probably made people question their lives today. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel bad, but at the same time, I don't. Because this was a simple solution. At the very end of it, when I finally spoke to the last person, I said, here's my solution and you can take it or leave it, but it would really, honestly, get rid of this whole entire problem. And I told them exactly what I said from the very beginning, just give me access for one hour. One hour is all I need, and then you can cancel it. I don't want it. I'm not looking for extra stuff. Mm -hmm. I just want my things back. And he goes, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that for you, and I'll give you extra days. And I was like, I don't even need those extra days. But well, literally, but why wasn't that done at the beginning? Because this has beginning. been days worth of phone calls and emails and messages. And it's just, I don't know. I think people I, don't know. So they just continue to pass the buck. Yeah. And I'm like, and I said that from the very beginning with the first person I spoke to. I said, listen, if you're not qualified to answer these questions, can you please provide me the information of somebody who is or push me to them? Like, get me somebody who's qualified. And they're like, okay. And then they proceeded to disconnect me all together. And I was just like, okay. So I reconnected again and I got the same person and you could see all of our conversations in the same little box. They can see everything. And they had the audacity to pretend like they were a whole different person talking to a whole <laughs> nother human. And I said, oh, hey, so-and-so, it's me again. You remember me? You disconnected me. I would still like to be put on hold until you can direct me to the right person. And they still didn't do it. Yeah, they don't have to. They're just they, they don't. And I, it just it comes down to they didn't want to do that extra work to go back and read what was happening and actually do the work of research. Well, that's what I said. I'm all for the quiet quitting. I'm all for do what you're supposed to do. Do mm -hmm. what your job details are. Anything after that, anything above and beyond that, okay, great. If you're trying to go for a raise or you're trying to do something or you're trying to impress your boss, you're trying to prove yourself, that's fine if you want to do that on your own. However, getting reprimanded and getting... uh getting treated like you're not doing a good job because you didn't exceed your duties. Mm -hmm. That's where I draw the line. Yep. yep. That's where I draw the line. You, if you exceeded, if you, if you did your duties, you have nothing to, you should not be getting reprimanded for anything. You should not be getting made to feel bad by, by your managers. You should not be getting made to feel like you should be doing more. But mm -hmm. if you're doing what your job requires, your job detail requires, then that's it. That's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think people are trying to do that. But like I said, they're going, they're just going a little too far and they're just not doing enough now. Yeah. They're not doing they, anything. They just they're just like, I'm just up. here. Yeah. I'm here. I'm just here. Pay me while I'm here. Yep. While they're on their phones, on social media. So it's kind of went from one extreme <laughs> to the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've got to get that pendulum to slow down in the middle somewhere. Yeah. And it all stems down from the top. Like, and I get it because like, even like McDonald's right now, they're on their wraps because <laughs> of what's going on with like all of their prices are just so high. It's just mm. ridiculous. Well, like, and the products food, are so much smaller. Yeah. It's like, you're not getting the same amount of food. Like it's almost like you're paying $15 for a tiny ass little thing of like a burger and maybe a small thing of fries and a small little drink. I, I can like take that same $15 and go to Applebee's and get like a whole ass meal, appetizer, mm -hmm. a meal and a dessert and a drink for the same price. Yeah. And so, used to, you could take it to the grocery store and get a whole week's worth of food, but now you can't, you <laughs> may get half <laughs> of a of carton egg. of eggs. Yeah, Maybe if you're lucky, like it's insane. And it's just, I don't understand it. Like 
there's people realize like you know money is is not real right like this is something that was made up to control us even further like it all stemmed down from ious you think, and shit like, you think money will ever just become like a not a thing yeah a hundred percent i think I it i think it's all going to be online currency yeah i was literally going to say that i foresee it being like the digital currency like people who have like the bitcoin and like um all it that makes other you stuff. want to get some bitcoin just to have not doing mm -hmm. just to have it for future in case yep. something crazy goes down yep. <laughs> you know what i mean it makes you just want mm -hmm. to because you just don't know anymore everybody's like oh know. that bitcoin blah 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 it's stupid okay yeah they thought that before and now look at the people who had bitcoin yeah when it blew up yep. and now they're all multi-millionaires and it's because guess what it stems down the government wasn't able to control it they could not control that currency so no wonder like everybody's like oh this all has a bad rep and it's bad for you and they can hurt you no it is no different than paper currency that you are currently have in your hand it is no different than your credit card do Literally, something i have a question and i want to know if any of our listeners have experienced this i've went to places and i've went to pay with cash Say I go to a gas station or I go to a, a restaurant, drive through or something. And I go to pay with cash and they say, we do not accept bills larger than $20 bills. Mm -hmm. Is that not illegal? No. You have to accept American currency. You Depending have to. On the place. No, it's, the, it's, the it's, 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 no, it's not. It's a government rule. <laughs> you have to accept American, all American, all currency. If you're in America, you no. I'm 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 not questioning. I'm telling you that is a law. <laughs> you cannot turn down currency here in New York. Yeah, you fucking can. You can't they have legally. Been doing it since I'm not saying I they're not born. doing it because it's happening to me everywhere I go. Well, we're <laughs> all, card only. No, yeah. you can't do that. That is See? illegal. And you know what's funny? Because it's the same thing with like a lot of the weed spots right now. They are only allowed to take cash. That's it. Yeah. They can't take anything else. Even like debit cards are like questionable. They they don't they won't let you take that either. They're just like, eh, it's a gray area. I have one place that like utilizes PayPal, but they have to like circumvent it all. And it was insane. And I'm just like, this this is insanity. Like do you people realize that this is insanity? I don't I don't understand it. I don't know. I just know I was taught in school. I weren't. I didn't learn a lot in school, but I did learn that it is illegal for a company to not take your currency. See, and I was taught the opposite. I was taught that it is in in the uh, the interest of the business. So whatever the business decides is what goes. See, and nothing right else trumps it. Takes, it. takes me back to our, our the beginning of our conversation about the school system. Yeah, and what's being told? Who's, and what's who's, being who's right? Who's wrong? What's why? Why are certain people being taught one way? And certain people are being taught another. And mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think that everybody's just bred to be stupid. Yeah, everybody's just being raised to be stupid. It's whatever the political agenda is for that county, for that state, for that little area. Honestly, it's what what do the higher paying people are telling other people like how to run things? That's it. Whoever has the most money is in control. Okay, so Danny Lynn in our chat says there, she, she looked it up for us. Appreciate it, Danny. She said there's no federal statute mandating that a private business, a person, or an organization must accept currency or coins as payments for goods or services. Private businesses are free to develop their own policies on whether to accept cash unless there's a state law that says otherwise. Yep. So That's maybe the I state thought. that I grew up in was they had to. Maybe yeah. that's why I was taught one thing. You were taught something different because yeah, I I genuinely I can tell you the teacher who said it, what class it was in. I remember it. <laughs> Same, me too. I remember because he used to be a cop and he used to tell us all these stories about stuff. He was my social studies teacher. Mine was my name. social studies teacher. Yes. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> so fucking crazy. <laughs> and so maybe it's a state thing. I don't know. It but, is. Uh, I was, that's what, but they, I was taught that that went everywhere, though. That wasn't just, oh, only in Ohio or only in <laughs> wherever. Only in Ohio. Yeah. It was, I was taught that 
no matter where you go, if you have American currency, <laughs> businesses are not allowed to refuse it. Yeah. That's and what I was told. I was, I was told the opposite. And it was crazy because I used to question that. We, there's gas stations around here that only take cash. And there was other gas stations that only take hard. But they needed to because it was a safety issue. If any of the workers had any cash, especially the ones that were 24-7 overnight, you're getting fucking robbed. Mm -hmm. Period. It didn't matter. 7-Elevens over here, too. Like, there used to be a lot of convenience stores that after a certain time, they would close their door and open this little plexiglass window, and they would not take cash, only card. That was the only thing that you were allowed to do after a certain time. Because people, again, would come in and try to rob them. I just, I genuinely think, especially since COVID, I think cash is definitely on its way out. Yeah. Uh, which is unfortunate. Because then... <laughs> Everybody's going to have all this cash and not know what to fucking do with it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the problem is, if there's, if it's not cash, it's, it's online. And therefore, guess who has access to it? Yep. Guess who has access to freeze those funds from you if they need something from you? And at any given time or they moment. They can't do that if you got cash. If you got no, cash and... buried in a coffee can in your backyard, then you're good. Once, once they figure out how to regulate the cryptocurrencies the way that they want to, that's, that's when cash is no longer going to, like hard paper mm -hmm. money is no longer going to be a thing. I, I'm, I'm saying that right now. Y'all can quote me on that shit. I'm saying it right now. The minute they figure out how to control it, cash is no longer be a thing. Yeah, I feel like there will be like places for several years where you can go and turn your cash in for digital money, digital currency, but you're, there's going to be fees. Mm -hmm. there's, you're not going to get oh, near as... $100 was. is only going to get you like 80 You know what I mean? It's going to be one of those <laughs> yeah. things. Because, you know, our math system isn't right either. Right. Everything <laughs> Everything's just, all messed up. Everything is all messed up. The world's like, going just... to hell in a handbasket, chat. <laughs> Everybody, all you listeners out there. So just do what you want, wherever you want, whenever you want, to whoever you want. I, it, it's just, the world's going nuts. It that's, is. That's the, I just... that's the uh, conclusion of today's episode. We just need to smarten up, guys, and just, just stop and think before you do anything, you participate in anything before anything happens, just really stop and think. And I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but tune into your empathy mm -hmm. because that's going to literally give you the right answers more than anything else because the logic doesn't logic anymore. It doesn't make any sense because the logic that we have is what was given to us from schools, from the government, from everything else around us. And it's time for us to change, change everything. We just need to change. Also, since I'm very aware that uh, common sense isn't very common, I would like to point out that that's a joke. Don't go around doing stupid stuff to people. <laughs> Don't do. But just think. You know what I mean? Go. Mm -hmm. Just use your brains. You have that's critical like thinking. Mm -hmm. Have empathy for other people. Have just common sense. That's it. That's all we're yep. here to tell you guys. That's our episode for this week. Flew by again. My goodness. I know. We literally just started. We just wow. started like three minutes ago, guys. I don't it, like this. I think it we took should us an hour. hour. <laughs> it took us an hour to do three minutes worth of talking. <laughs> Which I understand because it used to take me an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes. I'm going to need you to stop. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we appreciate everybody being here. Tune in next Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern. We will be uh, finally getting to, we've got a really good conspiracy that we're going to get to. Oh, hell, we didn't get to yeah, it again? Yeah, I know, again? we didn't get to it today, but hell. we will next week. And uh, yeah, I think, is there anything that I'm missing before I, I let these wonderful people go? No, just continue supporting us on the socials. Our YouTube is doing amazingly. Our TikTok is back and running again. So thank you guys for all the support, all the love. You guys have no idea how much it means to us. It means the absolute world. Yes, it does. We uh, we thank you with from the bottom of our our butts. <laughs> and, uh, tune in next Monday. Until then, guys. One thing to always remember: be the, the room. room. <laughs>